Hello, this is Jack Jackson. In this video, we're going to talk about how to find the mass of a planar lamina. We'll be using double integrals for this. So a planar lamina can be thought of as a very thin solid plate, like something made out of plastic or metal or something. It's really just a, a, a cylinder with a base of some shape, some uh, closed plane figure in the XY plane, and a very thin constant height. So the volume of the lamina then is just really the area times this very small height. So essentially we'll just treat the area like it is this volume. Um, so the density, remember in general, is mass per volume. For example, kilograms per square for cubic meter, for example. Uh, for a lamina, we may consider an area-based density in units of mass per area since this little height or this very, very small thickness of the, of the plate is, uh, is constant and we can basically ignore that. So if density is constant, then we can just multiply the area density by the area to find the mass of the lamina. And if the area is easy to find, that, that works out just great. But if the density is variable and or the region is more interesting shape, something not like a something easy like a rectangle, then we need a double integral to use uh, to find this mass. So if delta is the area density of the mass per area and D is the domain of the lamina, in other words, the, the base in the XY plane, then if we just double integral that density function dA, we'll get the mass. If you think about that, basically what we're doing here is we're taking that region, breaking it up into little rectangular subpieces, and we're assuming that on each rectangular subpiece that the that the density is roughly constant, and then we have a delta A times some thickness. For a, for, a, uh, for a volume multiplied by that density, we get a mass. If the density is already sort of figured in that the, uh, the height is, is figured into it, so that, that density is then um, mass per area of the, of the base, then we just multiply the area of that little rectangle by that. Well, that'll find us an approximation for the mass on uh, a little uh, rectangular piece of our lamina <clears throat> and now what we do is we add all those up take the limit as the number of those rectangular pieces goes to infinity and the the delta a's go to zero we got ourselves an integral specifically this integral right here so of course we'll use a iterated integral to figure these out so here's an example let's see if we can work this out find the mass of a planar lamina with density Delta equals x plus 3, which is given in kilograms per square meter, and it's bounded by the curves y equals 2x and y equals 9 minus x, and those are uh, given in meters. And we also want to be bounded by uh, x equals 0. Okay, well, the first thing we might want to do is actually just draw out this region, sketch it out. It's a pretty simple region. It's actually just a triangle. And so we can graph that. Here's what the graph looks like right here. And it's pretty clear to see that uh, the region that's bounded is this region in the first quadrant right here, which is a, a triangular lamina. And it is, um, let's see, this point here is 3, 6 boundary point. We have a boundary corner at vertex at 0, 0 and one at zero nine, and it's this region that's usually C-shaded here. So the mass is just the integral over that domain of the density function dA. Of course, the density function was given by x plus three, so we plug that in. dA we're gonna think of as dy dx. It's better to do y before x here because if we do a vertical strip, the top is always bounded above by the curve nine minus x and below by the curve uh, y equals two x. And so those become our lower and upper limits for y. And then our x limits go from 0 to 3. All right, then we can evaluate this integral. I picked one that's not too hard to do the first time. So you might be able to go ahead and finish this up by yourself. Why don't you press pause and do it now? Okay, if you're back now, hopefully you've done this yourself. But here are the details worked out. 
Notice that the x plus 3 uh, doesn't have any y's in it, so it can be factored out front of this first integral sign. So as far as y is being your variable, x and 3 are constant, so that x plus 3 is like a constant term can be brought out front here. So we're just integrating dy. The antiderivative is y. Evaluate from 2x to 9 minus x. That's 9 minus x minus 2x. That's negative x minus 2x is negative 3x plus the 9. And we still have times our x plus 3. Multiply these out using distributive property. You might know it as FOIL. Negative 3x times x is negative 3x squared. 3 times 9 is 27. If you look, this is negative 9x plus 9x for the o and the i, uh, which cancel out. So in this case, there's no, uh, no x term. Now we just integrate that polynomial, add 1 to the power, and divide by the new power. So this goes to, up to the third power. The 3's cancel when I divide by 3, so I get negative x cubed and then plus 27x. Evaluate from 0 to 3, plug in a 3, plug in a 0. This part over here, the rights, goes to 0. Uh, 3 cubed is 27, so it's minus 27. 3 times 27 is 81. 81 minus 27 is uh, 54. And so, and I double check that with the, with the graphing calculator here, with a Inspire CAS calculator. And uh, we get 54, and of course the units are kilograms. Notice that the units of x and y here for, uh, are, are, are both meters, or dA is in, in square meters then. And then the x plus 3 is in kilograms per square meter. When you multiply those together, you're left with just kilograms. Okay, let's try another one. This one's a slightly longer but basically the same concept okay so let's see if you can try this one find the mass of a planar lamina with density uh, delta given to be x plus 2y and that's kilograms per square meter and it's going to be bounded by the curves y equals 2 to the x and y equals negative 3 fourths times x minus 2 squared plus 4 so the first thing we want to do is graph it and find the uh, any boundary points or any interesting things. So the intersections of those two curves would be interesting to find. So if you can go ahead and do that now, press pause. Well, at this point, you should have graphed this. Uh, you can see that this is a parabola with vertex at 2, 4, opening downward. And if you plug in 0 here, you get uh, 0. Uh, so it's plus, minus 2 is negative 2 squared is 4, cancels that 4, so you get negative 3 plus 4 is 1. So that goes through 0, 1, and has a vertex up here at 2, 4. Uh, if you plug in 0 here, 2 to the 0 is 1, and 2 to the second is 4. So you see those are the two places where they cross. It might be more useful for us to go ahead and expand this out. So if you square out that term there, uh, x minus 2 squared is x squared minus 4x plus 4. Distribute the negative 3 fourths, so we get negative 3 fourths x squared. Let's see, the negative fourths cancel, leaving 3x here. And the fours against cancel here, but we get negative 3 plus 4 is 1. And you can easily see that when x is 0, this goes through 1. And we can see in this form that when x is 2, y is 4. So you can pretty easily see those things and check that, they, uh, that those are their intersection points. And you can see that this is the region that we're looking at. Uh, as you know, this green exponential curve is concave up, increasing. The parabola is concave down with the maximum right there at the intersection point and coming down. So this is the only part that's bounded by these curves. All right, now see if you can set up the correct integral and then come back and then we'll evaluate that. Okay, let's see if you came up with this appropriate integral here. The function that we're integrating is the density function, x plus 2y. And then the limits are on the bottom. It's this exponential function, y equals 2 to the x. And on the top, y equals, uh, well, the version we had of this equivalently was this version right here. Negative 3 quarters x squared plus 3x plus 1. And we know that if we take a vertical strip, it always has 2 to the x on the bottom and this quadratic on the top. And then the x's are going to go from 0 to 2, so we want to integrate with respect to y first, then x. Okay, see if you can work this out. This takes a little bit of work on this one to, to get the integral, 
uh, there's some algebra going on, and uh, one of your, your fancier integration techniques are used here, but let's go ahead and see if you can work this out yourself. Press pause now. Well, here's how it turns out. Um, the first part's pretty easy. We want to find the antiderivative here. Well, the x being a constant just picks up a y. And this being a y goes up the power 1, which is 2. Divide by 2 cancels that 2. So we get xy plus y squared. That's a pretty easy antiderivative. Now we want to evaluate that from these limits. That means take the top formula, put in place of y here and here. Um, Okay, I had an extra line there we got rid of. Okay, so we're taking this formula, where the y is, put this formula in here. And where the y is here, put that one in. Minus, same thing, but this time where the y's are, we put 2 to the x. All right, now the algebra gets a little bit messy. Distribute the x here. The powers go up to 3, 2, and 1 there. The coefficients stay the same. Now when we square this out, I've got the details worked out over here in the upper right corner. It's x, it's negative 3x, negative 3 fourths x squared plus 3x plus 1 times itself. So we just do this with law of multiplication. 1 times each of these things gives those same three terms again. Then we do 3x times each term. 3x times 1 is 3x. 3x times 3x is 9x squared. 3x times this term here gives us an x cubed, and it's 3 times negative 3 quarters is negative 9, 3 times negative 3 quarters is negative 9 fourths. Then we take the negative 3 fourths x squared times the 1 to get this term here. Negative 3 fourths x squared times 3x is negative 9, x, negative 9 fourths x cubed. We line that up under the x cubes. And we multiply these two together, we're going to get an x to the fourth term, and it's, it's positive 9 sixteenths for the coefficient. Now we add up like terms. We add up the 1 here, 3x plus 3x is 6x. Uh, we get x squares here. Negative 3 quarters x plus negative 3 quarters x is negative 3 halves. Or forget the x is just negative 3 quarters plus negative 3 quarters is negative 3 halves. And that's 18 halves. 18 halves minus 3 halves is 15 halves for our coefficient. Here we get our x cubes. We add these together. We get negative, negative 18 fourths, which is negative 9 halves. And, of course, that one is there. So that was a little bit of work there, but it's straightforward. That uh, works out to be this this here, which is what I've got right in here. Uh, this term I'm going to distribute the minus, so we get minus x times 2 to the x. And this is minus, and we got 2 to the x and then square. We could think of that as 2 to the 2x, or we could think of that as then 2 to the second to the x, which is 4 to the x. I'm going to write it that way for now. Now we got a little bit more algebra. So we want to uh, combine like terms here, okay, and let's see what we've got. We've got an x to the fourth there, so it's 9 sixteenths x to the fourth. We've got an x cubed term here and here, so that's x cubed. So we get a common denominator. This would be negative 18 fourths minus 3 fourths is negative 21 fourths. That's good. Now x squares, we've got uh, 15 halves here and plus 3. 3 is 6 halves plus 15 halves is 21 halves and that's our coefficient for x squared. We got 1x here and 6x is here. That's 7x. That was easy. And plus 1. So that's fine. And we're going to leave these last two terms like they are. Now the first part of this from the beginning to the 1, that's just a polynomial. So that's pretty easy. Let's do that. Find an antiderivative now when we integrate with respect to x. So the powers are just going to go up by 1 and divide by the new power. So this goes up to power 5, divide by 5. 5 times 16 is 80, so that's the new denominator there. 9 80 times x to the fifth. Now this x to the third is going to become x to the fourth, and we divide by 4. So that's 4 times 4 is 16 for the numerator or denominator. We still have negative 21 for the numerator. This one goes up to power 3. Divide by 3, 21 divided by 3 is 7, so we're going to end up with 7 halves for the coefficient of my x cubed term. This 7x is going to pick up a power one more to the power, makes it 2, and divide by 2, that's 7 halves x squared. 
and then a constant so always just pick up a multiple of x so that's just one x there now let me do the last part first next the antiderivative here is minus and the antiderivative of 4 to the x the antiderivative of 4 to the x is 4 to the x divided by log of 4 natural log now this minus x 2 to the x I want to find the antiderivative of that I worked it out over here to the side so this part right here is actually an integration by parts problem so if you let u be negative x and dv be 2 to the x dx then what we have is the integral of u dv by by the parts rule which is the product rule backwards you get uv minus the integral of v du so that's u times v multiply these two so that's negative x times 1 over log of 2 times uh, 2 to the x uh, and then minus the integral of v du which is these two multiply together so there's our negative 1 dx and here's our 1 over log 2 2 to the x now of course to do this we had to first find du and v we take the derivative of the u which is negative 1 times our dx for our du and the antiderivative over here is 1 over log 2 times 2 to the x and that's how we find our v all right well I just switched the order slightly by pulling the x over here but this is first term stayed the same the 1 over log 2 I can bring out front and the minus can bring out with that minus is makes a plus there and we're doing the antiderivative to the x which is 2 to the x times 1 over log 2 we got a 1 over log 2 times a one, another 1 over log 2 is 1 over log 2 quantity squared all right so those two terms together added together are the antiderivative of that piece so that's going to replace this part right here when we do an antiderivative and so that's going to give us these two terms right here all right now we got all of this long thing now we got a lot of arithmetic to do because everywhere here here's a, there's an x we're going to plug in 2 that's all of this minus everywhere there's an x we're going to put in a 0 now the good news is the parts with zero uh, work out pretty nicely uh, but the other parts are a little bit of work so here we go uh, 2 to the fourth is 16 that cancels the 80 down to 5 and then the other 2 times the 9 is 18 2 to the fourth is 16 so the 16's cancel leaving just negative 21 2 to the third is well one of these twos cancel leaving 2 to the second which is 4 times 7 is 28 one of the twos cancels leaving 2 times 7 is 14 and there's a 2 there uh, 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8 so this is minus 8 over log of 2 this is 4 over log of 2 squared and this is 16 over log of 4 that's minus now all this one this one this one this one and this one are all 0 so is that one 2 to the 0 or 4 to the 0 both 1 so we get a uh, don't forget the minus here minus and this makes a minus and that minus and that minus makes a plus so you get 1 over log of 2 square plus 1 over log of 4 so putting these together 18 fifths minus 21 uh, well let's just do this I think I can do this in my head 21 28 minus 21 is 7 plus 14 is 21 um, plus 2 is 23 23 uh, plus 18 fifths get a common denominator and add that's 133 over 5 and then this one is minus 8 over log 2 now we have a log of 2 square here and a log of 2 square here so there's 4 in the numerator here minus 1 here so 4 minus 1 makes 3 for our new numerator there similarly uh, 16 negative 16 over log of 4 plus 1 over log of 4 is negative 15 over log of 4 that's a reasonable way to leave it but log of 4 is 2 times log of 2 so this term the second and last term I can combine if I multiply top and bottom here by 2 I get a common denominator 2 log of 2 the top of this is negative 16 now plus negative 15 makes negative 31 for that numerator and so there's one way we could write that out and we could approximate that with the calculator and get about 10.48 now if only we wanted if the only thing we wanted was the decimal approximation we could have stopped way back here at the beginning as soon as we got it set up and do that integration uh, with the cal 
uh, with the graphing calculator, even like a TI-84 would do that. Here I worked it out with a TI Inspire. I've set up the integral just like I have it uh, up here on this, at the beginning. And uh, here it is. I told it to expand that, and we got it in this same form, essentially, that we have here in the box. And then I told it to approximate that and got the answer that we have here at the end. So there was a there were a few little things that were a little harder and longer on this problem. Actually, the pieces none of the pieces are really hard, but uh, as typically happens in calculus three, problems can get a little longer. So there's lots and lots of opportunities to uh, to make a mistake. So you have to kind of be careful with this and trace trace through this very slowly and carefully so that you don't uh, make any mistakes. We did have to remember integration by parts here. We had some algebra of multiplying things out, a lot of combining like terms, a lot of uh, substituting in and doing some arithmetic with fractions and so forth. Uh, but uh, that's that basically uh, was what we had to do to work this one out. So hopefully that gives you an idea how you can find the mass of a planar lamina.